Hey yo, my dudes, what's happening, man? Today we're gonna be taking a look at the Artist Pro 16 TP. This is the newest pen tablet from XP Pen. As a disclaimer, they sent this to my entire team at Aquatic Moon, and I wanted to give you a rundown of some of the features. I told them, don't send me any new tablets unless you got a big leap. So there were some big adjustments that they made, some big improvements. This is my new favorite tablet. I wanna to explain to you why. First, I wanna give you a quick unboxing here. As you can see, their boxes are always flashy. They always have a lot of artwork on them. Why does that matter? Because it shows you that it's for artists. Some other competitors, they ship it to you in a brown box, not XP pen, man. They go that extra mile. I have been using this one, so I've already taken off the plastic sleeve, and this is just for presentation to simulate a box opening. This is simulating the box opening. I hear you can see some nice grips on the bottom. This sticks really nicely on a table, and I will tell you, it feels really good when you draw on a flat surface but uh, you can put it on a stand as well if you need it to sit upright. But it is small. I think it's more designed to be drawn on the couch or something like that. You also got this new upgraded uh, pen holder, and this comes with pen nibs, obviously, and their new upgraded pen technology, which has a little bit more number of pressure sensitivity, like you can actually feel the range is a little bit more broad. It's usually the biggest thing. If you're curious about pen tablets, that's usually the biggest thing that you're paying for is the pressure sensitivity and the parallaxing on the screen. And we're gonna talk about all those things when we get into the review. There's also a good number of these different power cords. I have no idea what the heck kind of a button these things plug into. You could probably plug it in if you're living on the moon even. The setup is super quick and easy. If your computer has a USB-C, uh, it's just a USB-C to a USB-C, just one of them. Uh, but if you wanted the extra power for extra brightness, you can plug it in to an external source. You could have three cables going if you just have a USB, a normal USB cord. Then you've also got to have the HDMI in as well. That gets complicated, but it's great if you just have a USB-C uh, connection. Now I wanted to point out that this is also very different than the Artist 16 device or the Innovator 16. Now how is it different? The Innovator 16 has all these uh, quick keys. It's got all these extra buttons that you can press on the side of the screen. This does not have those. This is just like as if you were drawing on a tablet screen, really nice, shiny, bright, vibrant glass screen. The 16 Pro TP also has 4K resolution, and that's important to note. Uh, you can see the action on it. A lot of times some people will say, oh no, there's this like lagging thing going on with the XP Pen. I did not experience that with this one. This is a USB-C connection. It's really fast. So if you're experiencing any, any lag, it, it's entirely based on your processor power. Uh, you're gonna experience that with any tablet. I also noticed that they made the glass very thin, so they made a point. They actually made a point to say, hey, very low parallax. This is really XP Pen having received all of this feedback from their Innovator 16, from the Artist 24 series, from the regular Artist 16 series, which does not have HD uh, graphics, by the way. It does not have an HD resolution, not a 1080p. Uh, it, it, this, this is everything that they fixed, basically. The only thing is that some people might really need those buttons on the side, which I don't personally because I'm plugging it into a MacBook. And there are a few reasons for that, but I wanted to point out that this is a tablet that you draw on the screen, uh, but it also doubles as a tablet that you can draw off to the side. Uh, I use this when I'm uh, sitting at my laptop, if I'm drawing on the bigger screen, for instance, I plug it into a 22 inch screen and I can draw on the bigger screen using this off to the side if I want to, if I just need to get a bigger view, if I'm working on a large painting or if I am doing something like a poster or I need to see how things will look in detail on a bigger screen, it doubles as well. And that's particularly handy because you guys know me, a lot of times I will draw on my Intuos Pro. It's a different feel, but it's nice to have the option, and that's not an option that you'll get with most all other most all other uh, tablet devices. I'd say that's also one of the benefits of this being a 15-inch screen. It's pretty much the same size as my laptop, so it all fits into a, a, a backpack together. They do a thing at XP Pen that makes them stand out, and that is that they really pay attention to feedback from artists. Even when you get the packaging, it's like there's art all over this thing. And when I'm speaking with the representatives from XP Pen, they're like, hey, give us feedback, give us bullet point feedback, notes, things that we can improve upon with every iteration. And while I do think that too many tablets come out a little too frequently, uh, you know, a lot of times you can get a tablet like this and it should last you like five years. 
but oftentimes you know they're putting out a new model every year or every you know 18 months or something like that it's kind of overload and especially with so much competition but i'll tell you what i'll tell you what uh, xp pen mr xp pen he's got his ear to the wall this guy uh he's he's listening to what people want and they are making those appropriate changes and, and upgrades and so what I'm noticing with this iteration is a dramatic leap. And because I told them for a while, I was like, I'm not doing any more tablet reviews. I've been turning down Huion. I've been turning down uh, Wacom. I've been turning down every, every tablet maker. I've been turning down sending me anything until they've got something that's a big leap. This is a big leap. And I'll, I'm going to go over some of the features. I'm going to go over what the experience is like. But there's a reason why this is this is dominating as my new primary tablet for many, many reasons. So this device does not come with a stand. If you want to draw on it on a table, it lays flat. It's like paper, but it's it stacks up to be probably about the thickness of like, say, a wallet. This is not all that dissimilar from my old Intuos tablet that lays pretty flat. Uh, so I use it also off to the side when I want to draw on the big 22 inch screen. For example, if I'm working on a poster or a high resolution big image. Uh, but also you can you can draw on it the way that you're seeing me draw on it on this screen. Now I did have to buy an additional stand, which was something that's kind of an older model XP pen stand. And you can you can get this from the link in the description below. But I think it's like a $50 stand. It's pretty firm, but I found that if you're used to drawing on paper on a table or something, just lay this thing flat and it works pretty much like a, a, a you know, like a paper, I guess you'd say, like as if you're working on a flat surface and the glass does not have any sponginess to it. There's no give on it. It's actually feels very smooth. It's almost slippery. And I do wonder if there's a paper texture, uh, transparent uh, like cover that you can get. I know that for a lot of iPads, you can do something like that. And now you might be asking that is, that is a legit question given the price point of this device, you know, why not just get an iPad? And I was like, you know, Hey, that's a legit question. Now, there is a dramatic price point difference. I mean, you're talking about iPads to get something that has any kind of reasonable amount of memory. You know, you're talking about something that's $1,500. Uh, you know, this is running at, you know, around the $800 mark, depending on what kind of sale they're running. Um, you know, but if, if you're used to working with Sketchbook Pro on a MacBook or a desktop PC, if you're used to working with Photoshop and you need your full suite of, uh, you know, quick keys using a keyboard, if you're used to something that is more of a PC environment, and you want to keep that for your workstation. Maybe you have multiple monitors set up, or maybe it's something where you have a keyboard set up, or you have a lot of peripherals. Maybe you use like a uh, a Razer Tartarus, or maybe you've got you know recording software and you've got your microphone set up for it. Like I need all those things because I make videos for YouTube, and I need my editing video editing software, and I need to hook up my microphone, and I need to hook up all this stuff. So I kind of have to work on a MacBook. Oh, not even to mention the amount of data storage. I have to have a hard drive that's at least one terabyte, you know, for video files. I mean, these files get to be 20 gigs or 40 gigs each. Ain't no dinky little iPad gonna have that kind of storage for me. Mm, no, I need, to, I need the big beast. Which means for me, having a device like this that's off to the side, it's a double monitor system. Like that works out really well for my situation. It's also very travel friendly. This is something that can fit in your backpack if you're traveling, if you're going uh, on lots of trips or you want to be able to take it out to cafes or something, which people are starting to do again now, which is really super exciting. Uh, Emily, who works on my team, she's part of the Aquatic Moon team. She straight up bought a mini PC uh, and she hooked up a mini PC to this. So she's been using it as a mobile workstation. So it's technically it is almost like an iPad, except she can have a keyboard USB keyboard attachment off to the side and have her entire PC suite uh, hooked up to it and just have that mini PC hooked up. And I think that's a pretty smart move, if you, especially if you're thinking like, well, yeah, I want to do some traveling and such. Another thing that uh, I want to really point out here and highlight is that there is one USB-C connection. There's no separate power wire. Like there is one wire going into this device and that wire uh, connects to my MacBook Pro and it acts as the video in from the MacBook Pro. It also acts as the sensor for the pen uh, input 
and it also acts as a power supply. <laughs> Unflippin' believable. This is a huge leap. I mean, the last generation of tablets that I was reviewing all had, you know, three separate wires for those three different functions. So XP Pen is really paying attention. The first time I saw this was on the Artist 24 series. That's the Artist 24 Pro, by the way. <laughs> there is a distinction. They have that Pro line that has all the bonus features, man, and the higher resolution and the more optimized cables. And if you do need that larger real estate, by the way, I'm gonna highly recommend that you just spring for that 24 inch, especially if you're not thinking portable. If you're thinking like, nah, I do usually sit at a desk. Like you can get lost in your paintings on that Artist 24, but this is excellent for that couch drawing. I mean, I am just drawing a lot more now because I've got this device I can set in, sit in front of my <laughs> TV, pop on a good movie, and it feels like a real step up from the Innovator 16, which I know a lot of you guys actually picked up. But keep in mind that Innovator 16 has a slightly lower resolution and it's using the old pen technology. The Artist Pro 16 TP that we're looking at here has that 4K, and I think they should have just called it that, the Artist 16 Pro 4K. The pen that this comes with is, they call it the PH2 pen, and I think, I don't know what the PH stands for. <laughs> Personal hydration. No, this is a bit of an upgrade to their old pen, and it feels super lightweight. It doesn't feel flimsy, but it also has a little bit more accuracy to it, and it looks like they've increased the, uh, or improved the parallaxing. Uh, by making really thin glass. And I, I can tell you, I mean, it's right where you put it. I tend to move the the cursor just a little bit off to the side so that I can see what I'm painting, uh, but uh, very low uh, parallax on it. The only lag that I ran into was when I had too many processes going on on my MacBook. My MacBook's about two years old now. So if I've got two monitors going and I'm recording across, you know, one large retina display, and if I've got uh, if I've got videos going on from YouTube or something like that also in the background, if I shut all that stuff down, there's no lag at all. There used to be this issue where if you do really rapid lines, it will sometimes not register some of those lines. I didn't run into that at all. I've been doing very quick, sketchy, rapid lines no problems with any kind of like double click or anything like that. And in fact, it used to be that XP pen drivers would conflict with my Wacom drivers. Not so anymore with this at all. The only problem I had with it, the only, only problem I had with this tablet when I first booted it up, when I first fired it up, I didn't know that you only need the one wire. So I had like two wires sticking out of it. I had it plugged in too. And it was confused. It didn't know where to pull juice from. And then also the second thing was there's a power button in the top left corner. If you don't turn on the power button, you can't turn on the display. So I was, it was picking it up as a uh, pen input device, but it wasn't picking it up as a monitor. It wasn't outputting the video to it. So that was a bit of a problem and confusing. But if I had just watched my video <laughs> that I'm making right now, <laughs> Or if I had done any research about it at all, it wouldn't have been any kind of an issue. That's just getting used to how things work with this new device. Now, for some people, they're going to miss having the quick keys, you know, those those uh, macro keys on the side of the device. I don't personally, because I use the keyboard. I use quick keys on a keyboard. Uh, for some people, they just want the tablet, you know, and like, like having a single button on there might be beneficial to them. Uh, for some people, they're going to want touch functionality. Guess what? It does have that. It does have touch functionality. And uh, for some people, the USB-C cord is shaped in a weird way to where like you can't have uh you can't have it just sticking straight out. It has to stick it out to the side because it's angled that way. You might have to get a replacement USB-C cord if you need that cord to stick straight out, uh, for example. It does come with several power adapters for all different locations in the world where they are sold, I do believe. And it does come with the Pro Glove, the XP Pen Pro Glove. You know how much I love these things, guys. I don't wear it because it makes my hands sweat even more and they're super tight because I have monstrously huge hands. These things never fit me. Do all artists just have tiny itty bitty little hands? What's going on, man? Somebody make a pro glove for me. I want to be a pro. Seriously, guys, it feels like I'm trying to squeeze into a finger thong. So overall, why am I talking about it? Look, I don't care if you, I don't care if you buy one of these things. I don't work 
for XP pen. They sent me one. Do I like it? Yeah, I like it a lot. I like it enough more than ever uh, enough to put down some of my other devices. They actually treat artists pretty well at XP pen. And that is a big deciding factor because it means that they actually give a damn about the artists that are buying their tablets. And that's why they've become a significant competitor. But I'll tell you what, that doesn't mean I don't uh, or I won't ever buy another tablet from any other maker. It just means that these guys are doing it right. It's good customer service. They're paying attention to what their, their customers want. They're implementing it. They're making it for artists and they're listening to the artists that they're making it for. So when they have like, you know, a wire issue, they fix that wire issue, for example. When they have driver conflicts with other tablet makers even, they fix their driver issues. They invest that money into making sure that the next iteration of their product line is superior to their competitors and to their, their, their previous iterations. So, I mean, it, it is a downside that there are just so many tablets to choose from, uh, you know, specifically even from XP pen, you know, it's, it's a bit of a downside. It's a little hard to navigate. Like, do I want the 15.6? Do I want the artist 16? Or do I want the artist 16 pro? It gets a little confusing as to, you know, which one to get, but I'll tell you what, maybe the consequence of that iteration is that they really come out with something that is extremely improved over the last version that they made. And that rapid iteration, as what I've learned from being a concept artist, is how you reach excellence. It's how you're going to improve upon designs. You put something out, you get feedback, you improve the next iteration. From a marketing standpoint, maybe they just need to discontinue some of their older models uh, that don't have all of these upgraded features so that they can begin to phase them out. But I know that it, to some extent, it's like, well, those are the ones that are more affordable and they're more entry level. Uh, this tablet is definitely for pro level artists. Like, like I said, the entire Aquatic Moon team now is using the XP Pen tablets. And I intend to continue to work with XP Pen uh, for as long as they continue to keep up the same level of customer satisfaction and uh, improve upon their previous designs. So in conclusion, uh, that leads us to the final question of who exactly is this tablet for? I think that the Artist 16 Pro TP, uh, which whoever, whatever the TP stands for, probably means totally pro because I think that what they're aiming for is that professional market. This is not like, you know, for a hobbyist, you know, for a hobbyist, you know, why don't you get their $300 version or why don't you get their $100 version? Uh, tablet as a starter, you know, just to get your feet wet. So you're not trying to paint with a mouse. Uh, you're not going to do professional caliber concept art for games using a mouse, you know? So you need to start your journey somewhere. And until you're really certain that you're ready to commit that kind of money, you know, maybe work your way up uh, into the Innovator series. And then eventually, you know, you can tackle something like the Pro series. You know, if you are a professional already and you're kind of fed up with, or you're just looking to shift up, uh, from your usual other tablet brand, you know, seriously, this one is, is what this is designed for. That's what I'm getting from all of the feature list and from everything that I'm seeing and the design of it and, and the performance of it. And the 4k really establishes that it's like, you're not just doing, you know, Instagram art or discord art. It's like, you're doing this for money at this point, you know, and, and if you're not, you know, maybe this is something that's not, you're not quite, you don't need this yet because of some of those advanced features, you know. That's not to say that you couldn't. I mean, hey, if you got money to burn, go for it, man. But uh, I'd spring for that 24 Pro myself. And I'm waiting for the 4K 24 Pro. But hell, if money is no object, you know, get me a uh, extra large XP Pen Pro glove. I mean, if you got all that money to burn. And while you're at it, you can pick up some of my workshops too. <laughs> Must be nice, money to burn. So those are the reasons why I'm using this tablet an awful lot. I want to know what you guys think of it. Have you been using uh, any XP tablet tablets? Have you been pableting? If you've been pableting with the XP tablet, then please let me plablet. And don't forget to plablet with the plablet button. You can smash it if you'd like, but a plablet will do. If you like my artwork and you'd like to learn how to do it, you can uh, check out the Gumroad link below where I have tons and tons of workshops. I teach you how to make concept art for video games and comic books so that you can fulfill your art dreams. That's what I do. I'm like a art dream genie. It's kind of like, that's my thing. The artwork that you're watching me draw in this video is for the Return of the Ancients, which is for my fourth illustrated novel. That's right, I write and draw illustrated novels. And the fourth one is just about to be released. 
You can get Twilight Monk illustrated novels and art books on Amazon in paperback. As usual, I'm here every Wednesday and sometimes more, and lately a lot more. So don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, I'll catch y'all manana bun. Ciao, baby. Oh, yeah.